You're listening to Scotty Sports Show, featuring MD Lovelace and Jeff Bryce. All right, everybody, welcome back to our first episode of season two of the Scotty Sports Show. I'm your host, MD Lovelace. Jeff Bryce. Jeff, it's been a, a wild, what, month, eight weeks plus apart. Um, part of that had to do with just life in general. Another part had to do with I kind of had a, a little bit of a health scare with a stroke. So we've been uh, busy, to say the least. But, man, it feels good to be back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, kids are busy. It's starting to be the busy season with summer and all that. So, yeah, definitely. Good to see your your, your health is better. <laughs> A little bit, it's still stressful, but you do what you can do, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so cool start to the uh, season two. We have one of the current Packers offensive linemen, Yash Nidman, joining us um, shortly. So looking forward to that. Been texting back and forth the last couple weeks leading up to it. And uh, happy he realized I have to turn this in tomorrow for a school project as well. So it was awesome that he's... Uh, making some sacrifices and uh, going to make this happen for us tonight. So always a good time. Uh, cool. Is he currently in Green Bay? Uh, I think he's on vacation. We're going to find all that out more. And the, the best part I like about Yash is he doesn't really have a well-known story, which is awesome. I love when we can get guys like this versus the, uh, the overly publicized, overly hyped guys that you hear about every single day anyway. So it'll be cool to hear about a guy that's not as well-known here in Green Bay. So it was cool. He's genuinely worried about what we we're going to ask and how long things were going to go and wants to make sure he gives us everything he can. And like I told him, man, the, the floor is his. We can make it as interesting or as fun or as boring as he wants. I mean, it's his story to tell. So it's cool to have that, uh, that genuineness out of Yash already before we even get started tonight. Yeah, sounds good. Hey, Jeff. So we are back for season two. Joining us tonight will be Packer offensive lineman Yash Nijman. So, Gosh, what's going on, man? Hi. Good, good. I see the uh, Panther jersey in the background there. I don't know if oh. you have anything to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of one of my uh, college teammates is the kicker, Joey Sly, for the Panther. Oh. New, okay. Jersey swap, New Jersey Swamp. Yeah. It's all right, man. We'll let it go. We, we like <laughs> to have fun here. Like I told you earlier, it's funny. We were talking off air about, uh, you know, you were so nervous about what we were going to do or how long. I said, man, it's your show tonight. Whatever you want to do and whoever you want to bring on, it's up to you, my guy. So whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yash, um, for people that don't know you because there's not a lot of, about you, why don't you tell us a little bit more? Obviously, we know you played at Virginia Tech. You played all four years there, undrafted coming to the Packers. But fill us in on, you know, life before that, after that, and what you think of good old Green Bay. Um. Well, I really, I really like it here in Green Bay. Um, you know, it's it's a place of uh, you know a lot of excitement and um, atmosphere is great. Football is awesome. Really cold here, but I don't mind it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so pretty much, I grew up in uh, Maple, New Jersey. Well, I'm, I was born in Orange, New Jersey, back in '96. Um, but I moved to Maple, New Jersey, back in when I was in middle school. Played uh, four years at Columbia High School um, from 2011 to 14, I believe. Um, and then it was at that time, I think my sophomore, junior year, when I was like, okay, like, you know, I, I can I can go to college for this. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I took that route and uh, went to Virginia Tech for four years. Uh, played left tackle for three years, played right tackle for my last year. And um, since then, I've been here with the Packers. Uh, so it's been a really cool journey. Had a lot of good people around me, a lot of adversity. But, um, you know, I'm here now. So thanks, thanks. to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Back. All right. So, Yash, what has been your biggest shock about NFL life? Like, what is something that you're here now and never realized was something that happened in the NFL? I mean, like, you know, how customized the offseason is. Because, you know, college, like, you had a whole bunch of workouts and whatever. Uh, but, like almost customize how you want your off season to be it's a lot of time with family that uh i didn't get a chance to have in college so i guess that's like the biggest shock like the amount of freedom you have during the off season and the you know you can put in the work and still have time for family so i would say that's like the biggest thing for me that's exactly what i what i wanted to happen what i wanted so yeah yeah, and you're playing in some weird, unparalleled times, Josh. I mean, most guys are used to 
hey, I can do this and I can do that. This year was different for the NFL. I mean, Aaron Rodgers let you guys know, like, dude, y'all ain't going nowhere. Like, you are to sit home, stay home, do your damn job, and that's all you get to do. I mean, how weird was that, you know, coming from your first year to year three, being told by your team leader, hey, y'all can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you know, we're all accountable for each other, so it – kind of wasn't like a hard thing to do because, um, you know, we, our focus and goal was to, you know, win as much games as possible and do what we needed to do to uh, get to where we needed to go. Um, so it, it was kind of like, you know, in the beginning, not having fans, it was like, whoa, like, you know, this feels like a high school scrimmage, <laughs> but, you know, we still got to get the job done. So that's what we did last year. Looking forward for this year. Now, how difficult was that for your family not to be able to attend games? Because for, for people that are listening that don't realize if your family was in the same house as you, they're not allowed to come to the game because of fear of spreading the virus. I mean, that was a, a weird thing we learned about through having Lanny on was even though his girlfriend was in town with him, that means she couldn't come to the game. So it was either you come to the game or you come stay with me. It was one or the other. I mean, that had to be a weird, you know, wrench in the pocket of, hey, y'all can stay with me or you can come to the game. Take your pick. I mean, that had to be weird. Yeah, I didn't have yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any family come over. But hopefully this year will be the year where you know I can have my family over. It was definitely tough, uh, you know, not being around your loved ones for like five or six months. You know, we we all overcame though, but uh, it was a little tough. Yeah, sounds like NFL is going back full capacity next year, so that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, it'd be sweet. I saw the uh, Texas Rangers the baseball their their full capacity right now. I don't, I don't know how they well they're doing in Texas, but yeah, it's it's cool to see just fans in the stadium. Again, yeah, it is very cool. You know, at the same time, though, we want everyone to be safe. Uh, yeah. People are still getting vaccinated, which is good. I'm trying to get things back to normal. So that's a good start. Yeah. Definitely. So, Yash, a little bit of a change up coming at center for Green Bay this next season. What are some things you're looking forward to with maybe some of the new old line looks this year? I mean, have you guys... Kind of stayed in touch. Is everyone just kind of doing their own thing right now this early in the off season, or I guess this late with the draft coming up already? You know, how is the the offensive line looking coming into this next year so far? Um, you know, I, I think we're looking good. I haven't got to meet any new new people yet. I mean, as far as the people that were here last year, I mean, we're still in touch. All of us are still in touch, uh, working out, doing our thing. This o- this this year's OTAs. You know, I get to see everyone's faces again, so I'm excited for that. I'm surprised to see uh, Lindsley go with Balaga out in L.A. Yeah, I see. You know, I'm, uh, I got the news uh, via Instagram. Oh, uh, Lindsley's an awesome guy. Uh, you know, he's a great dude. So, um, I, you know, I wish him best of luck. Um, Hopefully, uh, we can get you tied into some of the community stuff that he was doing. Maybe Yash is the, the new face of some of the foundations Corey was with. We, we never know <laughs> what you the uh, yeah, I mean, I, I am, you know, looking forward to doing some community work. Um, I think uh, that'll be something that'll be uh, very helpful for me personally and everyone else in the community. Um, what are some of the uh, organizations you grew up with as a kid? Well, the, why, the YMCA was one. Uh, I didn't, I don't know if I was like a part of any like outreach community things. Uh, I know there was like a few events. I, I can't really like label them exactly, but you know, I, you know, being in uh, Orange, New Jersey at the time being growing up, you know, I, I was uh, I used to drum and, you know, trying to find ways to stay out of trouble. Um, I wasn't really a trouble kid, but I was always involved in some kind of activities, um, yeah. was drumming or um, playing sports or just whatever it was. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, we always like hearing the fun stories of guys times here in Green Bay. What's been the most unique Green Bay story you have for us so far? Uh, honestly, like, I think it was, like, my rookie season when we practiced outside and I saw, like, icicles on guys' chins and, like, <laughs> like mustache. And I was like, that cannot be actual ice right now. But just to, like, attest to how cold it gets, and I was just, like, so shocked. I was like, this is, can't, this is <laughs> unreal right now. It was, it, was, it was really cool to see that. <laughs> Yeah, here's another fun question we always like asking. What's the most unique item you've had to sign so far in Green Bay? Most unique item? Because um, I've seen everything from lawnmowers, cars, dashboards. I mean, body parts. It's been insane, some of the stuff I've seen. So I'm just curious what you've come across so far early on. I think I'm pretty sure I signed the kids, like, 
a baby. I'm, I don't know if I did or didn't. I'm pretty sure I signed a baby, though. I mean, I can't remember if I did or didn't, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I signed a baby. During I was my like watching uh, uh, Talladega Nights too many times or something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to you at the most awkward time. I'm sure I'll get a text like, like dude, it was this. We can end up back in the show. It's fine, yeah. Middle of a meeting. <laughs> So this off season compared to last off season, what are some of the changes that like Jeff was mentioning the NFL and even the Packer organization is trying to make? I mean, are you guys still having to test two times a day? Is it going to be a little more relaxed? I mean, what, what's the general consensus as of now so far for you guys? Um, as far as now, you know, I think the NFL, the NFLPA is trying to figure all that stuff out as of now. Um, so I think in the next like week or so, like we'll know all the ins and outs. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know exactly all the specifics yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. I saw JC Treader said something about uh, that t- telling you guys kind of to stay away from OTAs and all that right now. I mean, that's that's gonna hurt you guys with like signing bonuses and stuff, you know. That's that that suck, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I might have to, uh, yeah, well, some <laughs> guys want you know, oh, we're there, some guys are fighting for OTAs to be eradicated and. Um, I'm just, you know, still looking for the, everyone's just looking for the right opportunity to get ready for the season, whatever that looks like. So yeah. that's what we're doing. <laughs> now, Yash, I want to get your opinion on something here. Obviously NFL making some big news, eliminating a preseason game and adding the, the 17th game as a guy that's been kind of on the bubble came in undrafted. Is that kind of a, a bad news situation for you? Or do you think that actually helps you moving in now that you're in your what four coming in? Um, that for year three does that kind of help you coming in now with one last preseason or do you think that kind of hinders you a little bit you know adding a game towards the end of the season could be taxing on the body then that's like you know as far as some players that's like more money in your pocket you know for a 17th game compared to a fourth preseason game how weird was it last year to play without any preseason game i mean getting the dust off i mean that's kind of something where it's like man oh man that had to be you go from zero to a hundred real quick. I mean, how, how difficult is that a transition? Because uh, people don't realize they look at preseason as a joke, but for you guys, I mean, that's your first true, true test, but it looks like obviously LaFleur did a hell of a job getting you guys ready with a lot of scrimmaging and things like that. But obviously nothing compares to game temp. I think like all around the NFL, all teams trying to find their groove because there was no preseason. So I think like the first couple of weeks, everyone was like, you know, where do we stand? Like, how's this team looking? But <laughs> I think everyone figured it out uh, or tried to figure it out. And some teams, it clicked, some teams, it didn't. Um, but I guess, like, I mean, last year definitely was a curveball, but I think we all handled it pretty well. So I think whatever happens this year, we'll be ready for it. So if uh, Ricky Wagner leaving, are you going to get a shot at right tackle? Honestly, well, I'm, that's really up to the coaches. I'm just doing what I need to do, be prepared and ready to play every Sunday, given the opportunity. So, Yash, your first experience with Packers Family Night, I mean, coming from Virginia Tech, that obviously does really well. I mean, the hype video for you guys is always amazing every year. But how awkward is it to come into a stadium filled with 70,000 people for a freaking scrimmage? I mean, that has to be a a shock-type moment, right? (laughs) No, it was awesome. Like, it was completely awesome. Like, I kind kind of felt like I was in, like, Blacksburg, you know. Um, (laughs) The fan that, like, it was just so much great energy out there. Like, it was electric. Um, you know, my first year being there, it was amazing. So I think like, yeah, yeah. I, um, I don't know if I land believe that day. No, I think it was, it was, a, pre-season, it was a preseason against Kansas City. I land believed. Um, <laughs> that, that was also a lot of fun too, though, but it was, it was a great experience. Now, did you get the ladies at cop to feel or did you get the beer bath? Cause it's usually one of the two for the first Lambo leave. Say it again. I said, did you get the old tap on the rear end when you jumped in the crowd, or did you get the beer bath? Which one was it? Because normally, oh, yeah, it's happening in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get no. Trick is you kind of leap just right so the beer pours in your mouth. I mean, no one's really perfected that one yet. So if you can do that, yeah. I'll in Green Bay. <laughs> sure that I love that. <laughs> it's one that slam a beer. So I'm just saying, you know, if you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, beer is beer is good. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you have, do you have a chance to get spotted cow yet? Oh uh, yeah, no, the spotted cow is fantastic. Oh, spotted man. cow is fantastic. <laughs> yes. What was uh? 
What was the drink you missed back home from Virginia that we don't have here in Wisconsin? Are you like a yingling guy at all? I think that uh, made its way up to Virginia. I mean, like, a lot of my teammates made some moonshine. I mean, like, I don't <laughs> think any of it, <laughs> I don't think any of it was like, you know, labeled or whatnot. It was, like, it was just like homemade moonshine, but oh, yeah. it, it tastes pretty good. It tastes well, no good. wonder why you haven't gotten COVID yet. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. you got it's pretty to big down there. east, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in the south, yeah. Um, like, you know, Virginia, South Carolina, that that kind of yeah. No, some of it's sweet. Some of it's like, you know, it's pretty good. So, you know what I mean? I can't think of anything else that Wisconsin doesn't have. <laughs> I'm pretty sure pretty doesn't have here. Moonshine, though, but, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. So, Yash, what is your uh, favorite go-to vacation spot when you're not hanging out in chilly old Green Bay? Um, Honestly, um. I'm going to have to, well, I went to California for the first time this past uh, February. Honestly, that that just might be it. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I love yeah. the weather in California, the scenery, everything. Aaron Rodgers, obviously, is the, the team quarterback coming into the season. How awesome is it to play for, you know, your, your NFL MVP? I mean, that's got to be a, a crazy, you know, experience for, you know, anybody coming into the league. I mean, how awesome has it been to learn underneath his coolage for you? Um. Uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is a great dude. Um, have nothing but great things to say about him. Uh, I just think like you know, just being in his presence along with like the other offensive guys and defensive guys, like you kind of feel like an elevation of your game. You know, like coming out of college, it was for me. It was like uh, okay, like you know, I you have to perform, but like you know, it's just like a I can't even describe the feeling, but it's just like a different feeling you get. You know, it's like. I, like it's just you just have to do what you have to do to get things done you know it's just a, it's just a great culture it's like a culture here that you know I feel like we have something special very special um and uh I can't even express it in words so <laughs> yeah so be it's, honest with this Yash before you came to Green Bay what did you actually know I mean did you even know where Green Bay was or was that kind of like a honestly, real it's funny because it brought me back to when I had Madden 07 back in my like 2008 <laughs> and I was playing on my PS2 and I, I was playing with the Packers and I was like, hmm, where's Green Bay? And then like I remember like you know, <laughs> looking on the map and I was like, Wisconsin. I've never heard of Wisconsin before. But then like I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, Wisconsin is mid Midwest, right next to Ohio and Minnesota. So it was just like a um it was a how do I say yeah, it? Yeah, do you feel it? Very, <laughs> <laughs> it was very exciting. I was very curious to see, like, you know, how the area looked and everything. So, um, so yeah. first impressions of Green Bay when you got here, be honest, because we've heard some good ones, man. What was your first real impression of Green Bay? You know, going by Lambeau Field, I was just, I was in awe because it was just beautiful. Like, I've personally never, like, I, I, where I live, you know, there's MetLife Stadium, but before that was the Giants Stadium. But, like, to see how, like, Green Bay is literally in a neighborhood and not, like, a major city makes it even cooler. So, like, I was just like, this place is, like, really sick, you know, really cool. <laughs> um, and then, like, having the fans and everything come out, I was just like, I love this place. <laughs> How, uh, how long did it take you to get bored of Green Bay? I mean, with nothing to do. Um, <laughs> that goes out a lot? Or are you a guy that's more of a homebody? Or? I keep myself occupied, but, you know, I just like how Green Bay is just really, like, simple. Like, outside of football, you, you know, it's just, for me, I just like to be, you know, keep myself occupied. Like, make my music here when I'm not at work or take some strolls or go hiking or something, you know. It's just, like, different from the city life. Uh, I mean, I, I do like the city life in, like, you know, New York City area because I'm, like, 20 minutes from there from New Jersey. But I just also kind of like how Green Bay is just really low-key. So, yeah. What uh, you said, you're making music. Oh. So you know you got to give us some kind of a sample of what you're doing nowadays. Oh, sample. Um, you know, honestly, I could do that for you, but I'm, like, in the process of making a lot of different things you now. <laughs> What, what kind of music is it? I mean, are you singing country albums, drinking your moonshine, or what kind of stuff are you doing? You know, honestly, like, I, I, I make, you know, some hip-hop beats. I'm, like, doing some house and, like, some techno stuff and some R&B stuff. So just, like, a whole bunch of different genres of music. Um, I just love, like, making and listening to it and sharing with other people, like some of my childhood friends and 
some people that I've met uh, that's also entangled with music. But it's a cool hobby to do. It keeps me centered uh, during football season. Okay. Nice. So we got one unknown fact about you. What's two more facts about Yash Nijman that people wouldn't really realize without you telling us? Um, I mean, hiking is kind of different. I would have never guessed you would have said you're a hiker as an offensive lineman. That's pretty darn awesome. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just got into it. Um, actually, in college, I mean, I never hiked when I was a kid, so it was like kind of still brand new to me. Um, it was a pretty girl that got you into it, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, my girlfriend did get me into it. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I love it though. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um, did you guys do the the geocaching yet? Have you heard of that? No, nah, no, I don't think so. Okay. So it's basically like little landmarks set up or whatever, and you kind of hunt for like hidden treasures or like hidden clues or at the end you can get like a prize on my friend amber does it's pretty awesome we'll have to set you up with that um yeah that'd be sweet. Like she'll do a lot of like graveyard hunts and stuff they'll have where like mm-hmm. clues are hidden throughout the cemeteries it's <laughs> pretty awesome man the cemetery hey you never know man we'll give you any yeah. boost we can so yeah uh, i thought it was weird too but i'll tell you what man it was it was pretty neat to see and like i said they have like you kind of keep like a little guidebook and there's like different stamps and different stuff. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's different. Obviously you can do it in like hills and valleys, but let's be honest, it's Green Bay. It's pretty flat here. So you don't necessarily have all that, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of a second fact. Um, I don't know if it's common, but like I had the same phone number since like 2006, I think I've never yeah. had a different phone. Number. I don't know if that's a fun fact. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Um, what about any other hobbies or special talent? You know what? Honestly, like yesterday or a couple of days ago, um, I just remembered that I collected some like Marvel comic books back when I was in middle school. Oh wow! And, you know, I've been looking for like I've been trying to like because my mom she kind of sometimes misplaced things at the house. <laughs> So I've been trying to look for it for forever, but those comic books came out, I think, like in the early 80s or 90s. And I'm like thinking, OK, uh, well, I collected a few comic books. I might want to collect some more. But that's actually a fun fact. Uh, I forgot I you know, had interest in collecting things, comic books. For one. It's funny you mentioned that because one of your old teammates, uh, Blake Martinez, is becoming huge in the Pokemon craze, man. I don't know if you follow him at all on IG, but. It's oh. blowing up over these Pokemon things that he's all into. It's pretty weird. <laughs> you know, and then even to add to that, um, my little sister and I, we went to Dave and Buster's uh, a few days ago, and there's this game called Injustice, which is like the DC comics and stuff. And like, every time you play the game, like they give you like this card that has, you know, Dark Side, Superman, Batman, or whoever. And you can literally just collect these cards and play the game while you have like, uh, like um, different strengths and uh, like different Supermans and different Batmans and stuff. I thought it was pretty fun. I had like 22 cards, but like now <laughs> if my little sister comes and visit me here in Green Bay, there's a Dave and Buster's not too far. And I'm, I'm hoping they have injustice so we can play the game again. But that's well, we, uh, we can definitely get you set up with a little private night over there. I promise you, uh, we'll take care of you because they, uh, sure. we've been in contact about trying to set some up with those guys. So, Shout out to Dave and Buster's. We already have our first guests ready to come on and hang out and play the game. So uh, we'll get you taken care of. Yeah, the other fun part we always hear from guys that are obviously uh, taller and more athletic looking. I mean, do people obviously recognize you as a Packer almost immediately every time you walk in a room? <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think it's like to the point where they wouldn't say it and like, you know, but they'll, they'll, they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah. You haven't had your yash coming across a restaurant thing or anything yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man. When you get your chance, just be ready. When you blow up here in Green Bay, which I know you will, because um, you definitely have the personality fit here for a very long time, it, it'll happen, man. It's going to be awesome. I can guarantee it. It'll, it'll take it back, but you'll get used to it real quick. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, a, that'll be a cool experience. <laughs> yeah. Going back to college, uh, I, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, you guys did the Enter Sandman thing, didn't you? Oh Just yeah, and save. How was that? Like, you know what? Uh, take you back in time, though. Back in 2015, our first game against Ohio State, 
the year after we beat them and they won the national championship, that was probably the most electric like time I've ever. That was my first college game. And I think we registered like a, I don't know what kind of earthquake though, but it was, it was pretty like, it was just screeching for me. Like, I couldn't hear anything. And I remember, I think the third drive that we had on offense when we scored the touchdown, I just like, I just almost blacked out and it was just amazing. <laughs> like people were screaming. I was so excited. And I was just like, wow, this is college football. Uh, like, yeah, this is a This is, this is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, speaking of like traditions, that that's cool. I love, I get goosebumps every time I see like a video of those. And then, yeah, yeah Camp, uh, Camp Randall with the jump around at Wisconsin. Like, so many different college traditions. It's it's neat to see. Yeah, it's sweet to see, yeah. <laughs> to actually, like, be in the moment, though, is, like, even oh, yeah. easier. Because then, like, you just remember that for the rest of your life. Just the emotions and everything. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it's cool. Let's go to uh, your most memorable college moment. You know, was that it, that kind of electrifying atmosphere? Or was there a game that maybe you had that stood out for you, you know, your your biggest pancake of a game or something like that? Maybe that stood out for you. Let's see. Um, hmm. Well, I remember senior year, I mean, we uh, played North Carolina and, like, had, like, a 99-yard drive, I think, to win the game being behind, I think, by a touchdown and went for two to win the game. That was a crazy experience. But I I would say, I mean, I didn't play this game because I was, like, injured my junior year. But I remember we played Pittsburgh at home, and I think it was our last home game for the seniors. And uh, we got a huge fourth down stop against Pittsburgh. And, you know, like, literally it was, like, really emotional for everyone because, you know, I personally I had a really good relationship with all the seniors of 2000. let me see, 2000, class of 2000, let me see, 2017, 2017. Um, and it was just like, for me, that was just a really cool, like really emotional experience. Um, just seeing that that was the last home game and it ending like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. I remember Did that. you play with uh, Logan Thomas? Was he the quarterback? Um, I think Logan Thomas at the time, like he was – uh, a little bit older than me. I, I was there with uh, Michael Brewer back in 2015. 2015 was my first year. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I played with Michael Brewer, uh, Brendan Motley, uh, Gerard Evans, Josh Jackson, and Ryan Willis. Okay. So who is the uh, most memorable guy you ever went against, either in college or the pros? Like, who is your big crap talker that man just got underneath your skin? Hmm. Crap talker. Um, I don't think I had one. What? Uh, what? The trenches? That's embarrassing. Yeah. Man. Every, every trench man seems to have one. I know, but um, I I think no one really talks trash to me though. Even in well, okay, Cleveland Farrell is probably that guy. We were we were going at it my junior year in college when we played Clemson uh, when they were like second in the country. We were like twelfth. I remember that game. Yeah, we were going at it so. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> you know, hopefully we get to play the Raiders. I, I don't know if we do play the Raiders or don't play the Raiders, but he's with the Raiders now. But when we were in college, we, we went at it a few times. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, let's see. What else do we have for you? Jeff, I'll let you go on this one. If you were playing football, what would you be doing with your life? Like, what's your, your backup plan, just in case? Um... Honestly, like if I wasn't playing football, I, I what like my dream job or what I like something I would want to do is to actually compose like a score for like a, a movie. If I could get into that, you, you know, like the uh, the Hans Zimmer's and um, like those those composers like that. That's probably like a that would be like a kind of like a ideal dream job for me. Like if I wasn't playing football, because I mean, like I'm so plugged in with music with that if it wasn't that then probably even doing like missionary trips around the country or around the at least around the world um i took a um a missionary trip in, to the bahamas back in 2016 when i was in college and it was like a really cool experience and i know some so people who would, your, uh, who, would your, who would your dream collaboration be with and if you could work with any artist that's out right now current or former who would it be um like alive or dead or just right now Anybody? Uh, let's do both. 
Oh, man. You know, like, Stevie Wonder will be one. Um, Michael Jackson will be another one. Because, you know, when I'm thinking, like, you know, a lot of the older, old school people will be deaf, like, because nowadays, like, people are still very talented, but, like, you know, the authenticity of music back then would just definitely be something I would be, like, interested in. You know, like I, even now, like someone, a modern artist I would love to work with would probably be like J. Cole or like Kendrick Lamar or Travis Scott. But if we like take it back in time, I would love to like sit down and listen to like Earth, Wind and Fire, make a record, you know, from scratch. Nice. Uh, their, their music is still awesome to this day. But yeah. What's, uh, if you were to pick a song to, uh, you know, for your title track for a movie featuring you, What's your song for your title track? And then who plays you in a movie featuring or about your life? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I know we're challenging at nine o'clock on a uh, Tuesday night. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't know who would play me though. Uh, well, let me see. I would want Will Smith to play me. I mean, we look nothing alike, but <laughs> great actor. Um, hey man, and, uh, did you ever see him in uh, Ali? He put, had to put on a ton of weight for that. So, I mean, anything's possible. Uh, <laughs> Camera angles can make you look taller. <laughs> probably, let me see. Uh, probably F the Police by NWA. <laughs> you know, like a bad scene of him like walking to an explosion in the background. Yeah, that would be, that'd be sweet. <laughs> nice. Well, we won't be getting any uh, uh, police banquet type speeches off of this, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh um, man! So, if you had to play your your go to song every game day, like right before you take the field, what's the song that's always your go to? Um, well, I've been listening to the song since high school, but "Focus" by Wale featuring Kid Cudi. <laughs> That's that's my song. Um, and, you know, it's funny, like the irony in it is that, you know, he referenced Green Bay. Green Bay cheesehead, you know, and then like, <laughs> yeah, some other stuff. <laughs> and years later, I'm in Green Bay still listening to the same song. <laughs> so, he, yeah. uh, are you a, a WWE guy at all? Oh, uh, growing up, I was. Yeah. Growing up, I was. Big Bay wrestler. He's the big John Cena guy. Yeah. Good yeah. I love Edge. I still love Edge. <laughs> no, honestly, Edge has probably one of the greatest like um entrances oh, ever. Yes. ever. Did you see um, him at Mania this weekend? Oh yeah. He still gives me chills. I love that guy. <laughs> Edge and Batista. Yeah. 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 Good times. You know, I had like pretty much all the SmackDown versus Raws for PlayStation 2 growing up. So see, yeah. we uh, I may. I may have broken a PlayStation with uh, one too many Randy Orton scoop slams on me. That was awful. <laughs> oh, the RKO, yes. Oh, man. The RKO. See, we, uh, we just got into the N64 in our house, Yash. So if you ever want a good throwback, I don't even know if you know about the N64. Like, I don't think you're ready for it. Nintendo 64. Yeah. You know what? I, I still have, uh, I have the console, but I don't have the game and the controllers. I got you. I don't know where I put those, but yeah, I I had the that was actually my first video game growing up was the Nintendo sixty four. What yeah. was your go to game on the sixty four? I had this uh, race car game. I don't know what it was called, but it had like a red Ferrari in front of it. I oh, uh, cruising USA! Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 I had that too. That was my game. That was my game. That yeah. Was- well, you're in Green Bay. I won't say where, because obviously that's our privilege information between us. But there's an arcade bar downtown Green Bay that has that that racing game. Really? So I got the hookup on that. So we will go go do that and maybe film oh, that for you. That would be awesome. Yeah, no, I'm a little crushy on that game. I haven't lost yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> you must I'm just saying you're going to buy me some drinks when you lose. So that's all. <laughs> so during the off season, I won't get you in trouble with Maddie. So, uh, yeah, man, that'll be good. But. Oh, yeah. um, all right, so cruising you at N64, you're about that life. That's good. Yeah. Um, favorite holiday? Favorite holiday, um, Christmas. Christmas is a favorite holiday. Um, and New Year's, New Year's Eve is pretty Better cool. to receive. Say it again? Better to give or to receive? At this age, um, probably give at a kid and receive, um, you know, because 
you know, you always want those things, you know, TV shows you that you think you want. But then for me, I, I was a big Power Rangers, like Power Rangers fan growing oh, up. Oh, yeah. Um, and, like, I, uh, for Mighty Morphins, probably Tommy with the white. Tommy, yeah. White gold, <laughs> the white and gold suit, man. That was so sick. And then, yeah. like, you know, years later. Uh, he started out uh, green, right? Say it again? Tommy was green then. He went to white, right? Yeah, yeah. green went to white. No, he went yeah. tiger. Yeah, yeah. Memories, great memories. Yeah, nobody messed with the tiger, man. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the real tiger, what do you think about Tiger Woods, man? And uh, did you get into the Tiger King craze? Let's cover all things Tiger real quick. Since we're oh, on yeah. Up. Like what happened to him recently or just like his career? Yeah. It's like, yeah, man. I mean, how oh, do you... Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Like what happened to him? It's craziness. But, you know, I'm glad to see he's doing better now. All right. So Tiger King, in or out? Were you into that a little bit? You know, I had a I had a Tiger Woods computer game, PGA, probably PGA two thousand four, PGA two thousand three. Um, I don't know if I ever played it or not, but um <laughs> I mean I, I wasn't too big into golf growing up. Um, but you know, I think this past summer, last year last year and the year before I got into golfing and I didn't realize how hard it was. You got your Mason to give you some lessons, man. That dude is insane. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure he's under the pro tour when he's done. That guy is Hustler, man. I see him at uh, um, what the heck is it called? Um, Top Golf in Green Bay all the time. I mean, he okay. was always there. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, I got to find some clubs that I can actually swing because I'm so tall. <laughs> well, I don't know if the clubs make the golfer, the golfer make the clubs, but I guess the size wise, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to find some proper clubs. Yeah. So, yeah. let me ask you this you've been in Wisconsin now a few years. Have you? Done any hunting or fishing yet? I haven't done any hunting, um, but uh, I think I've fished like once or twice. And you need a lot of patience for fishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need like a Saturday, you just don't have anything to do. Um, but I, I do like fishing. I haven't caught any fish personally, but I do like fishing. Well, if you're like Jeff, you're too afraid to ice fish. But if you're like me, you can lose your phone under the ice for 18 hours. Oh, my yeah. iPhone did work right out the water, though. I will say that. So thank you to our fans who actually listened to our show because they were able to help me get it out. And I only had to pay 40 bucks instead of 400 bucks for a diver. So it's oh. have, uh, connections here in Green Bay. <laughs> I was shocked the thing was still alive. So <laughs> that's only to leave the phone. I said, no, we got so many of the players' numbers and pictures and things that probably should never make it out alive. So, uh, yeah, I definitely had to get that beast out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I don't know if you'll fit in our ice shanty, so I don't know if that'll work. Yeah, we might have <laughs> you know, you know, you're saying ice fishing, so you're saying like me on ice fishing, like me, like on top of <laughs> like box river fishing. I would take you on like 16, 18 inches. I wouldn't take you out on no six inches of, of ice. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, not, I'll, th- I'll think about not it. Not for someone at six seven. <laughs> nah, stand up and lift his arms. He'll be all right. Just pull yourself right up. Yeah. Oh, I could have paid Yash just to reach down and grab it for me. I wouldn't have had to pay anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some. No, I'm just kidding. But so, what are some other hobbies or interests? I mean, are you into like extreme sports? Do you like rodeos, circuses? I mean, what else are you kind of into? To fill your time. Um, I like watching like you know uh, thriller shows. Uh, I used to be really big into scary movies, but then like, I got stopped. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm like really like getting into UFC fighting. Um, I think that's pretty cool to watch. Um, I think it's an awesome barbaric sport. <laughs> you ever want to do a, a day of training, Ash? We got a guy that we had on with the uh, UFC Montel Quick Jackson. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Um, cool. They would gladly have you for a day at the gym. I know a lot of guys like to do that in their off season. We'll have to bring you down there for a Saturday or something because he's got. And you got to see how they lock the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there'll be a lot of swinging and kicking versus on an er room and they're they're oh. just taking pit punches from dudes like it's it's intense it with everybody man they don't give two craps about it big small yeah. fat, skinny mm-hmm. anybody just threw down it was cool but yeah they would work with you the first day and not expect you to like you know use your eight foot wingspan on somebody obviously and teach you how no, to use it to your manager but Knowing me, though, I probably would go in there and just start immediately going, like, super hard. <laughs> just try to, like, swing and kick yeah, over. Right there. So, yeah. just a big bear. <laughs> yeah. Swinging and kicking. Yeah. 
give me some gloves. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. Then we might have to pause on that. I don't know. I know. <laughs> but that's why probably I shouldn't go, and I can just probably watch and like probably do some right. tutorials, but not really hit anybody. <laughs> I'll just send you a link to that episode. It was a fun time. They had a put it this way: they had my uh, son that was six at the time on the mats with uh, Montel trying to balance some of the yoga balls and stuff. I mean, the guy sat with us two and a half hours off camera, even just hanging out, chatting about his story and. Mm-hmm. Things he's dealt with yeah. outside the, the octagon and stuff. I mean, just super cool, chill down. To even, even now, yeah. I mean, I message him say, "Hey, that was a good fight last last uh, last Saturday or whatever." And he, he won his last one. I saw. Yeah. Um, but even message him saying, "Hey, good fight or whatever." Or uh, he's got. He always has this restaurant he goes to all the time, and the food just looks amazing. And I'll be like, "Oh man, that looks amazing." He'll respond right back to you, just down to earth, dude. Like. You should get connected with him. He's he's cool. Yeah. Plus, we've been promising to get him up for a game, so that might have to be a fun weekend we have of bringing him up here and getting to meet some of you guys and stuff and hanging out a little bit. Leo Letson. Ultimate Fire, wasn't there? There you go, the Ultimate Fire. Sorry, I was just drawing a blank. But she's uh, another Milwaukee native that was featured on the show. She's actually an Air Force veteran as well at still serve. So mm-hmm. uh, two local talents that for sure have done really well in their time in the UFC. So... Yeah, man, if you ever want to check some out, let them know and we'll get it taken care of. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. So if you had to, uh, who was your go-to team growing up then, obviously? Obviously, it wasn't Green Bay because, like you said, you didn't know of us till 2007 or 2008. <laughs> so who was your, your team growing up? And please don't say the Bears or we're going to kick you off the show right now. <laughs> I did not say the Bears. No way. Right. No, sir. Perfect. No, sir. No, sir. Um, I, was, I was a Giants fan growing up. That makes uh, sense. Yeah, being from New Jersey. Um, but yeah, I was a Giants fan. <laughs> my family, my dad and I were Giants fans. Okay. So uh what was the family reaction when you got picked up by Green Bay? I mean, were they kind of the same thing of where the heck are we going, or was it just happy to be anywhere at that point? Um, honestly, you know, I mean they were really super happy because uh, you know, I was gonna play with Aaron Rodgers and my family knows about Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> And the success he's had, um, so they were very excited. They were very excited. So, have you, how would you rate Aaron Rodgers' Jeopardy skills? Have you tuned in at all? I mean, he's not no, watching the podcast, I have, obviously. I haven't, so. I haven't yet, and I feel bad I haven't. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm probably gonna watch it after this. I was but, say, I think yeah. you only got a couple of days left to watch, so you're running out of time. Yeah, uh, the episode today there was a question. The answer was the Green Bay Packers, and nobody, nobody knew it. Okay. And he looks, he goes. Green Bay Packers, come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. No, nah, yeah, I'm, I gotta go check that out. I'm gonna go check that out. Uh, so he's what? good. I mean, I I think he could get the full time gig. I really do. Yeah, I mean, like, he has the face for it. He has the charisma, <laughs> all that stuff. So, how uh, how shocked were you, Yash, on the uh, the engagement to Shailene Woodley? I mean, did you guys have any idea at all, or was this kind of you kind of fill it in through Instagram as well with that whole engagement off that quickly? Um, actually, you know, um, when it happened, um, I was like looking through social media and then like, it kind of blew up and I was like, wait a second. Um, did he just say he's engaged? Yeah. And that award show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy smokes. And I was like, I checked it out. <laughs> I think everybody was like shocked. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think anyone knew at the time, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was like some news that just came out of nowhere almost. But yeah. Well, then him dropping the bomb, he wants kids all of a sudden. Like, that was never the Aaron or Jordan Rodgers I knew that's been around Green Bay the whole time. And now he's somehow becoming Papa Rodgers and grandkids down the road. It's like, whoa, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> oh, completely changed his life. So it'll be interesting to see what Aaron Rodgers is like in the huddle this year now that he's all, you know, love struck and change is complete. I mean, did you guys kind of notice a change in Aaron this year? He, just, he looks happy. Yeah. Well, he seemed like he had more fun playing this year. I mean, the year before, he definitely seemed tensed up, but. This year, it seemed like he had a whole different vibe to him kind of coming into the thing this year. Yeah, I mean, um, so did everyone. Um, you know, I think, like, he was just the one just to start it off for us this past year and uh, just kept it going. So, yeah, he was – he's – his – um, him being in, like, a better headspace or just more relaxed and elusive kind of, like, gave us all confidence moving forward. Uh Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was your biggest Aaron Rodgers surprise? Like we've heard some interesting stories, obviously through the media, 
But what was your biggest shock about Aaron Rodgers that you wouldn't expect kind of coming into things with him? As far as like, like him as a person or him as a player, like what's something that kind of shocked you about him once you learned? Um, honestly, that he's just like really just down to earth. Honestly, uh, like me first meeting him, we had a uh, I think like my rookie year for OTAs, we had like a little paintball kind of gig thing. And like, you know, he kind of like sat next to me on the bus, like me as a rookie. I was like, holy smoke. <laughs> and, you know, we just sat oh, down dude. there. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I literally, I told him, I was like, you know, what, like back in 2011, like when they won the Super Bowl, I was just, I was telling him, I was like, I was a freshman in high school, like watching you on TV. Like <laughs> and during halftime, like I went outside to go play some football. Like you know, like now you're sitting right next to me. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It was a, it was a crazy moment, but it was awesome. He had a weird look on his face on that one. Like, all right, Rob, I'm gonna go sit somewhere else now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was actually just super chill about it. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, were you kind of a fanboy when you first got here with him? You know, kind of get the frog in the throat, or were you just you know he just kind of act like another dude to you? Um, well, I think, you know, as a rookie, yeah, pretty sure I was, felt, I felt like a rookie for sure, but, you know, he, like he, anything I like needed help on, like he was always available for, so, you know, I, I just kind of like, um, like if I had any questions with anything, he would answer them for me, so he was kind of almost like, uh, you know, someone that, well, anyone would look to is like, for like a teammate that you, that can help you out. Or, you know, anyone that would just not, I wouldn't say mentor, but like, you know, someone that can help, like being an older guy, someone I can learn from is what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, speaking of your rookie here, Yash, what were some of the rookie things that you had to deal with coming into the league? Um, well, I had to f- fill the, uh, what's the name? The snack bowl? An, off- an offensive line room, uh, Ellen and I, uh, and then like some other rookies we had to, um, fill up the uh, refrigerator with some water. If anyone needed coffee, you had to do that. Any small little things that, you know, the veterans need, we had to do. Um, but Did you have yeah. the steak dinner night? Say it again? Did you guys have the steak dinner and uh, drink night or not really? Um, I, don't think I, would, I don't think I was there in my rookie year, but they definitely had that. Um, they definitely had that. Excuse me. Give me one second. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have that. I don't think I was present for that though. But yeah, lucky then, because that's a fifteen hundred dollar bill and then some at least. Oh, I know. Even though it was at six, seven, eight, twelve grand, it's like, ooh. Yeah. As a burger, it's nice, but as a rookie and your paycheck, it's like, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like a shot right to the pockets. <laughs> so, what was your uh, your first rookie purchase, Yash? What was your first NFL check that you spent? What did you uh, use it for? You know, I I got some like some really good smelling cologne. Mason Kirk John uh Satin Mood Oud. Um that's what the name of it was called. Um and I, I still have it. Uh, you know, I, well it was only two years ago, but yeah, that was my I would say that was my first big purchase and it kind of sounds like super small, but um I really I uh, that that was something I really wanted. I wanted like some really good cologne. Um I, I like smelling good. So. <laughs> yeah. Sure, everyone else appreciates it around you, Ash. Not a big deal. <laughs> do you, uh, you guys give us any uh, insight on Jordan Love? Is he, uh, is he kind of coming along? Or, um, well, I mean, from my my experience with Jordan Love, he's a really cool dude. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Um, <laughs> doing his thing uh well i mean last year he was a rookie though so yeah oh yeah really well, no preseason too it's tough to judge a guy without any game experience yeah. i think the thing that shocked most of us as fans and probably you guys as players they have a number one draft pick not even suit up for an nfl game i mean it had to be something i mean if you can imagine first round draft pick money and never having to take the field of your rookie year I, I don't know the last time i've ever even heard of that unless there was an injury i mean i, I don't remember that ever happening in the history of my time covering the nfl Mm. Um, so it's not really a bad problem to have. I mean, you're learning underneath the NFL MVP and you're making first round draft pick money, not having to put all the pressure on yourself. You know what I mean? I think that was kind of a nice thing for him is, I mean, when it was him and Brett, obviously you weren't here yet, but that was a very tense, awkward situation of the pressures on and him breathing down his throat every single week. 
And then we were around kind of when the, the changing of the guard happened at the game when, you know, Brett was asked to leave the next week he's traded. I mean, that was a very tense situation. So it's kind of nice, at least for now, where we haven't really had that scenario come into play of the Jordan Love and the A-Rod true comparison other than what you players see at practice. Mm, yeah. Um, it's um, it's just, I, I mean, I don't really, I, I don't really know the ins and outs with that. I just, I just yeah. know Jordan, Jordan Love is a cool dude, man. Um, yeah, he seems like a good kid. With a, yeah. Good kid with a good head on his shoulders. It seems like. Yeah. 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 Very, very self-aware. Very, you know, cautious on what he says and what he does. I mean, we got to talk to him the same day we talked to you at Locker Clean Out. Just a real humble kid. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he's worried about the right thing to say. Doesn't want anything out there that shouldn't be. I mean, he's a very smart kid for you know, his age group. I mean, obviously Utah State isn't a slump school either. I was just talking to a major league baseball player that was talking about uh, the competitiveness between their school and Utah State and talked really highly about how Love kind of composed himself in and out um, with that. So he definitely has the smarts to it. You know, performance-wise, we're going to see what happens obviously sooner than later. I mean, as a teammate, you had to be kind of concerned about some of Aaron's comments and, you know, no one – no one was sure if Aaron would be back, but it's been very clear, you know, as the last couple of weeks that Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback until further notice. So that's got to be kind of reassuring for you guys, obviously, still being able to protect number one. Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, the whole organization, uh, you know, those guys higher up are going to make their decisions. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll just be ready to play on Sunday. So, <laughs> right. Who is yeah. uh I know we want to cut you off soon because I, I know you got stuff to do and I appreciate you taking the time out, but let's finish up with a couple of good quick hitters. Um, favorite player that you kind of idolize in your position group? Uh, as of now? Just in general growing up, like who's the guy you kind of modeled your game after? Okay, honestly, I, I played like defensive line earlier in my career. Jadavion Clowney was that guy for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tyron Smith, the left tackle for uh, the Cowboys, in college, I know I was, you know, trying to mirror him or trying to, like, figure out his game a little bit. So I, I would say it's Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith. Who is your, uh, who's your celebrity wow moment? Like, who's the the kind of fanboy moment that you've had now with all the people you've gotten to meet along the way? You know, honestly, I met Tyron Smith this, like, March, and it was kind of a cool experience. <laughs> so I, I would that would go to that one, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite football memory to date? If you had to pick any game of any time, what would that game be or that moment be? All of last year's, like the whole season, which is electric. It was, it was like probably the like best team I've ever been on my entire life. So that I, I just collectively hold that as a whole memory. Last year, just the whole year. So you're on the board of uh, Tom Brady should just retire because that's all I am. <laughs> Seriously, man. Like everyone's like, dude, come on, man. Like, get out, get of, him here. out of here. Get out of here, man. <laughs> That's a, a local guy. To the, get out of here. <laughs> a local guy to the trophy that you know you guys have a thirty-five foot tall trophy. Mm-hmm. It had to be so shitty to watch the guy throw a Super Bowl trophy. I mean, that to me is any yeah. fan anywhere, any Lombardi fan ever. What kind of shit is that, man? You're th- you're throwing our trophy of our namesake. You're throwing it across the water like it wasn't crap, man. Like that to me was like, all right, Tom, you're you're drunk. Go home. Like stop yeah. it. <laughs> and just now he finally says it probably wasn't a good idea. You think? <laughs> you just don't care. I know you've won six or seven now, but I mean, dude, you just don't care when you're whipping a Super Bowl trophy across the water like it ain't nothing, you know. Especially yeah. to a rookie receiver. Yeah. That's Tom Brady for you, though. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> Tom Brady for you. Um, yeah. Has there been a, uh, a moment after a game, obviously you guys do the Jersey swaps and things like that. Have you had like a certain piece of memorabilia that you've gotten from a game that you just will never, never part with, or you thought was kind of a unique, you know, trade out or something? Um, well, I mean like this Panda Jersey you saw, I swapped with, you know, that was my first Jersey swap ever. Uh, you know, Joey Sly and I, you know, we're good, good teammates, good buddies off the field. So that was kind of cool to do that. Well, Yash, I'll make you a deal. I got a couple of my old jerseys if you want to swap any time. You might not be able to sell it for much, but I got you if you ever want. I mean, I played for enough crap teams. I can give you one. <laughs> hey, I, I rock that thing out, man. I'll wear it to a game or a practice or whatever you need me to. I got you. 
Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Hey, I may yeah. not be the uh, the only guy offering you out there, but I'm the only guy offering you right now. So I think it's a pretty damn good thing if I say so myself. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. Give me a little shout out for that when we were at Locker Cleanout. You pulled over and you actually searched your whole vehicle for something for our, uh, our daughter to be down the road or stepdaughter to be. So that was pretty nice that he. He stopped, pulled over, signed a cleat, and made sure he hooked her up and made sure she was happy. That was pretty damn awesome. So, obviously, day after a loss, not many guys are in a good mood, and you definitely put a smile on her face. And we we're one of the cool guys that, you know, made sure you took care of the fans. So, it was pretty awesome. Pandemic aside, it was just neat that you take that time out. You're definitely a fan favorite, and I know you will be moving forward when more people obviously get to watch this episode and learn more about you for sure. Thank you. Of course. So, um, Yash, if you could tell anybody about what to expect in 2021 slash 2022 of the Green Bay Packers, what can they expect out of Yash Nijman and the Packer organization? That we are on the hunt for the Lombardi Trophy again. So that's all I'm going to say. We're on the hunt for the Lombardi Trophy again. Okay. Awesome. Well, Yash, we want to thank you for taking the time out with us tonight. It's been awesome getting to learn more about you. Uh, Thank you. To uh, get some of this competitiveness going, you got my cell number. We're <laughs> definitely going to hit up the uh, cruise in the USA and some uh, Dave and Buster's, man. We're going to make that crap happen for sure. Uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'll, uh, I'll definitely bring some tissues along because I don't want you crying <laughs> home to middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I got some sand yeah, yeah. for you, too, if you need it, you know, for when everything starts stripping <laughs> stuff. So, seem like yeah. you, seem like you might need the Kleenex. <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We'll definitely go. We can invite Jeff along to be the cheerleader. Obviously, you know, he's going to go to your side, but, you know, we'll let Jeff watch. I don't want to, you know, hurt his old man hips or nothing. No, no <laughs> more bias either. <laughs> What's that? There's no being biased either. Oh, Jeff will. Jeff will go against me the whole time, man. He's all about, you know, <laughs> yeah, he won't go for me. I can pay him to still and go for me. So don't worry, Ash. He'll be all one side of you. So, maybe it's a good thing Ash is saying that. We don't want Jeff to just be a fluffer for you. <laughs> no, honestly, I might need a, a few like test runs with that game because it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's all right, man. It'll be all right. So, hey, I'm I'm family and then Packers. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Bro. I got you. Well, awesome, Yash. We'll definitely chat soon. Like I said, we'll uh, we'll try and hook that up for you. Just let me know a time, and uh, we'll get you set up over there and have some fun. Okay. Yes, man. Thank you for having me on the podcast for the show today. Yeah, sorry it went a little long, but hey, man, when good oh, conversations man. happen, we're going to take advantage of it. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> all right, Yash, we'll chat soon, all right? Okay, man. How are you? See you guys. Yeah, yeah. See you later. If you're looking for an elegant night on the town, look no further than Green Bay Limousine, serving the Green Bay and Fox Valley areas. So that was uh, Yash Nijman, offensive lineman for the Green Bay Packers, Virginia Tech Hokey, uh, another awesome guy. Like I said, I feel like we say this after every guest pretty much we've had, um, but always cool to learn about a guy that hasn't had a whole lot of media attention or hasn't had that big blow game yet. Um, but like I said, man, I definitely mean it. He's definitely got a bright future in Green Bay. It kind of reminds me of a, a Bakhtiari, Bakhtiari early on where he was a, kind of a quiet guy. And then once he hit his groove, I mean, the guy's unstoppable. So and he has the thighs for it. Like you said, 6'7". Yeah. I'm a little dude. I mean, standing next to him, I feel little, and I'm 6'1". So, it's a lot. It's neat to see a nice, humble guy like like him. He's just easy, easy going. And, I mean, obviously, like he likes a lot of stuff that we liked, you know, wrestling and Power Rangers. And <laughs> he's going down, though. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not going to go light on him just because he's a Packer and he's 6'7". Like, it's <laughs> going down. I hope you guys both understand that. I will talk shit to him all through this text message about to send saying, dude, I'm not kidding. Like, you're going down. So, um, I might not be able to record the first time because I don't want him to cry. I'll give it to him the second time when, you know, I at least give him a shot for the first time. I'm not holding back, man. Like, he's going down. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you the last time I played a video game. <laughs> I'm telling you what, we just got the N64, like I said. Just bought the extra controllers. We had a good time. I picked up Mortal Kombat. I got a... Actually, I should check the mailbox. I think 007 might have came in tonight. I have 007. I have, I have N64 in the basement right now. Dude, I could just bought yours since you never used it, dude. We just... We didn't read my, my Griffin likes to play it every once in a while. 
Jeff, it's all right if you don't follow me on social media anymore. It's fine. We're just co-hosts. It's no big deal. What? <laughs> it's okay if you unfollowed me and just don't care about my posts anymore, man. It's all right. <laughs> no, but so we were talking about before we got on the show, obviously we didn't want to keep Yash waiting. Uh, we had a little bit of connection issue again, but um, yeah, man, it's been a crazy month and a half. We want to thank everybody for kind of reaching out. Um, like I said, we both kind of had stuff going on, you with some family and just trying to be a dad and my own personal health score. Um, like we were talking about before we brought Yash on, um, I have a serious moment had a TIA slash mini stroke for the second time in eight years. Um, so yeah, obviously took the time off to kind of heal and get with some family and deal with life in general this weekend. I got baptized, you know, my mid thirties, but that was something that kind of struck out to me. It was kind of a, a seeing the light moment. I mean, obviously you were instrumental. I want to thank you obviously for, uh, keeping tabs on me after everything happened. Um, it was weird because it was kind of one of those things, you know, we joked around about, I could feel something was up my health. And then, uh, all of a sudden that Saturday night happened next thing you know, I'm laying up in a hospital bed here in green Bay. It's definitely a scary time. And it makes you appreciate things like the show and our guests and, you know, having those guys reach out, Earl Dotson, who I can't say enough about, has been one of the best contacts day or night, anytime I need them, you know, being able to reach out to him and talk. And he'll be our guest coming up on one of the next couple episodes. We have Brad Williams, stand-up comic coming out. He's been awesome um, during this. So you, you and Justin have done a great job getting posts up, keeping fans updated with uh, everything happening, obviously breaking some stories. Obviously, we got to cover a lot after locker clean out. Um, I'm still putting this out there. We were the first group to break the story about Mike Patton, you know, being released from the Packers. Um, you know, we were the only people we talked to coming out of that meeting, talking about Aaron Jones with his urge to want to come back. Despite I think everybody saying he would not be back, you know, being a part of the first and last conversation going into the uh, the coaches meeting that night for exit interviews. I mean, the first group he talked to coming out, that was pretty neat that, you know, we've been able to get some some breaks that nobody else had. So I hope everybody, you know, remembers to check us out, subscribe, obviously, so you guys get all these new podcasts that we have coming out. You can go anywhere. Basically, we're all over, you know, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere they subscribe to a podcast now, you should be able to get us. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you can get the automatic feeds and uploads. You don't have to worry about downloading. We don't want to be like everybody else. We don't want the, the pre-scripted answers. Here's your response. We're just going to wing it and go with it. We want the best best opportunity. And I think it's keeping guys on their toes. So it was nice that, you know, Yash was able to take those questions with a grain of salt. I think he threw him off a little bit with the Jordan love, but you know, that's what makes this stuff fun and interesting. So good job you on that one. You could definitely. I want to, I love that. that I tell him, I wasn't kidding about that Virginia tech thing with the, uh, enter Sandman. Oh man, that's the coolest thing. I love jump around, but that, that inner Sandman is amazing. Yeah, you got to check that out. I was a goosebumps. That's world record for it. It was, it was pretty uh, awesome for that. So uh, definitely. Excited. They do that every, every game before the game starts when they like their entrance to the stadium. It's, it's cool. You got anybody that sees it, you got to check that out. Yeah. It's definitely a cool YouTube video. I, I don't like to pump a lot of other people's stuff, but yeah, they're, they're, Entrance is definitely one of the top in all of the college. I mean, it's voted so every single year besides the jump around craze, but the actual entrance, yeah, there, there's probably not much else out there that can, that can compete with that right now. I mean, it's just a whole no. level of sign and tingling kind of excitement for sure. Well, just the song in general. I mean, Metallica. And <laughs> yeah, it's no Hanson. It's no uh, Kid Cudi of today, um, yeah. but it definitely a uh, classic that can't be beat. Um, Jeff, your predictions are the Packers going to make a freaking move finally for uh, free agency. It seems like we've just been sitting still. Uh, I got two names that I think uh, they're telling, they're saying Rogers is talking to two guys. Um, I think one is Richard Sherman. Okay. I think the Packers need that attitude. And I think under the radar guy, I think they need somebody in the middle. That's a veteran. Like they kind of lost, they lost Kirksley, Kirksey. And uh, I think they're talking to KJ Wright from Seattle. I, I mean, you get those two guys from Seattle that, you know, the, the Legion of Boom. I mean, you get that kind of attitude in there. I mean, that could go a whole ways. Everybody's, everybody's pretty negative on Joe Barry right now. You know, he was a under the radar guy and nobody really liked him or nobody really wanted him. He's coming from the Detroit Lions, which were what 
0 and 16. And I mean, his track record's not that great. But LaFleur loves his energy. Maybe that energy from Sherman and Wright could help that defense. I think those two guys, I think they're going to be Packers by the end, end of the day. Not end of the day, but I mean, end of, end of free agency, maybe going, maybe after the draft, you'll see. Unless they attack it there. Well, we'll see. I think as of today, my top three surprises are obviously Aaron Rodgers still being here because after his speech, I think you and I were texting almost immediately. You know, I I won't say what Jeff's immediate reaction was because we talked right after the game was over. But uh, yeah, it it definitely didn't feel like Aaron Rodgers was coming back. I'm pretty sure you were one of the people that said he was gone. Um, Uh I finally get to toot my own horn about being right that I was right about Aaron Jones coming back. You said he was gone. I was one of the Rodgers ain't going anywhere for a long time, (laughs) and I'll say that forever. (laughs) Um, But the Aaron Jones thing I called, so I was happy about that. But man, the Kevin King thing. For $11 million, whatever it is, I'm still shaking my head over that. It's not, it's not really that much money because it's it's a lot of incentive laden. So he has to make certain standards in order to get that certain amount of money. So he technically he probably isn't going to make, realistically, we know the Kevin King that, I mean, sorry, Kevin, if you're listening, <laughs> but uh, we know that Kevin King is not going to hit that that 10 million you know he's not well and we're we're in for a tough off season again next year people are talking about this year but you look at next year's free agency like starting off jair alexander among others i mean just wild it's great at the tight end position to have big dog back but to see some of the other names coming up again in free agency and having guys like uh, aaron jones and uh aaron Rodgers take up a majority of cap man we're gonna have a whole another situation again next year man it's not gonna get much better so i'm hoping we can find the right name Obviously, J.J. Watt not signing Green Bay was kind of a letdown. I think a lot of people were really hoping. I know it, it came close to Green Bay, but, you know, like you said, Jim Leonard not coming to, to Green Bay as a D.C. I heard maybe the offer just wasn't up to par. He, you know, he thought he had a better situation down Madison. You can't fault him. Um, we'll see what happens next year with, the, like you said, Joe Barry instead of, you know, a, a Leonard getting an opportunity. So, Definitely a lot of question marks coming into the offseason. Hopefully, like you said, the Packers still a lot of work to do to even be able to sign the draft picks coming out of this year. We'll see what happens. A lot of rumors about a offensive lineman coming in in the draft for a first round pick, which is kind of scary and a head scratcher. I hope not. Um, yeah. Just, <laughs> Sorry, Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, just let give him a shot. He's 6'7. I mean, just give him the arm width and he'll be fine. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll be an, an interesting offseason, but it's good to see guys already like Yash saying, hey, it's been Lombardi or bust again this year. Like we don't expect anything less than a run for it. And that's, it's always good to see, you know, kind of coming into it. So um, it, it's good to see that that mentality has not left Green Bay and the, the wind is underneath their sails. It was good to even see at Locker clean out guys still like pissed off and ready to go, not hey, we're defeated, but like guys were genuinely pissed off. And if they could play the game over the next day, the energy was there to be able to do it again. Um, just because of that, that hurt, that hurt, you know, and, and the expectation that it was their game to, to go to the Super play. Bowl. One play killed them. There was a couple, but yes, definitely. <laughs> right before half. I mean, that the play, play doesn't happen, that game's over. Yeah, there, there was definitely, definitely some moments, man. Being able to talk to, like I said, Having the opportunity that I had at Locker clean out, unfortunately, our, our camera batteries didn't want to work. Um, I used the camera from school, and uh, it didn't want to cooperate. We probably could have had some cool interviews. But real quick before I forget, you mentioned Lindsley. I got to give him a shout out. Um, a couple of years ago, we were at Locker clean out with little J Money. So if you guys don't know who she is, you can follow along on our page on Facebook against Scotty Sports Show. Um, he had promised to do some equipment and then didn't make it out or had to go out a different door or whatever happened. And uh, we saw him this year at Locker clean out and kind of remind him of the situation. And he goes, well, I don't have any gear. I already gave it all up. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. But he came back after that meeting um, that the team had and made sure he got her a nice, like, $300 backpack, personally inscribed, and then signed it for her. So I got to give Corey a big shout out for being a man of his word and hooking her up. So he definitely didn't have to, but it was awesome that he, he genuinely said, hey, I felt bad. Here's a bag. It's the best I could do and hooked her up. So... Um, you know, we've heard some great stories. I got to share a story about how me and Corey's dad almost got into it. Um, this first game here in Green Bay because his dad, yeah, <laughs> we helped him get to a locker room he didn't know how to go to. And 
tried to call me out for not having a wristband, not realizing I actually had three of them. So it was a fun story I got to share with Corey, and we kind of had a good laugh. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a fun time because he goes, I remember my dad telling me that story. You're that dude? I'm like, yeah. And he apologized for his dad. So it was just kind of a fun fun little story, full circle of, you know, Corey's time here in Green Bay front to end. And again, I told him I would give him a big shout out for that, you know, for being a stand guy and making sure he kept his word and his wife chiming in on it too, saying, hey, I'm glad – you know, if he wouldn't have, I would have made sure. So it was just a great, great story. The opportunity, like you said, the things Corey's done, the community, obviously being a Walter uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee here out of Green Bay. Um, so obviously we want to wish Corey very well here in Green Bay. I know he he really wanted to say, and it's disappointing that, you know, he couldn't get the shot in Green Bay. Obviously being hurt didn't help, but it just goes to show you the class, the guys that we're getting through the Packer organization, whether they're here or not. Balaga, another guy, TJ Lang, another guy. Um, Tom Crabtree, another guy. I mean, just the list goes on and on. Donald Driver, obviously one of the biggest ambassadors of Green Bay. Far, who knows? I mean, that dude's all over. <laughs> we like to give that sort of crap, especially on our interview we just had with Ez. But uh, yeah, he doesn't know who he's cheering for. If he's a, a Viking ambassador, a Packer ambassador. Personally speaking, if I were Brad, I wouldn't even have came back to Green Bay after everything that shook out here. But it is what it is. So good for him for coming back occasionally, at least. Yeah. Well, Jeff, I think it's about time to wrap it up. It's bedtime. We uh we got a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. We got to edit this out for school project tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to come back a week after week. Hopefully, we can get you on for them. Um, like you said, you got a lot of stuff kind of going on with kids. So do I. Yeah, so I'm trying to get activities, but I mean, if I can, I will. <laughs> and I know people love having you here, Jeff, because it's not just quite the same without you. So we do miss you when you're gone. So. Uh, <laughs> We're going to try and get these scheduled whenever we can. And like I said, keep bringing more shows, new ones week after week. Yep. Sounds good. For this week's show, I'm your host, MD Lovelace. Jeff Price. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. If you're not already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you follow the podcast. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Scotty Sports Show, Scotty Sports on the IG handle and Twitter. Share us, like us, and we'll just keep bringing new content each and every week. 